All right, let's dive into something pretty complex and uh, pretty important in global politics today. The whole question of Taiwan, you know, its identity, its relationship with mainland China. Yeah, it's almost, you know, it's like a geopolitical Rubik's Cube and everyone is trying to solve it. But um, the stakes are incredibly high. Definitely, definitely. And to really unpack this, we've got this conversation between two people who are really grappling with Taiwan, its history, where it is now, all of that. And, uh, you know, they get in some really interesting points, historical stuff, political ideologies, and, of course, the big one, China, the PRC. China's influence is impossible to ignore in this. I mean, you've got this island, thriving democracy, tech powerhouse, but it's always there, this question. Is it part of China or is it its own thing, independent? Right. And one of the things they talk about is this whole Taiwan status, undetermined thing. What's that all about? So after World War II, no treaty actually said Taiwan goes to, you know, nobody. They were focused on beating Japan and Taiwan's future. Well, they kind of punted that down the road. So basically, the Allies just left this ticking time bomb. No clear answer, just problems waiting to happen. Kind of, yeah. And you see the impact today in how Taiwan interacts with the rest of the world. It's this legal gray area. And China, they use it to their advantage to say Taiwan's theirs. Makes sense. But it's not just international, right? The conversation gets into Taiwan's own politics, how different groups see the future of the island. It seems like there's a whole range of opinions. Totally. You've got some who say unification with China, that's inevitable. Others, they want full independence, like now. And then you have everyone in between. And that's where things get really tricky. They even mentioned this politician, Lai ching and some ancestral land comments he made. Not really familiar with that. What happened there? Oh, that was controversial. Basically, he called Taiwan his ancestral land, which for some people implied a connection to mainland China. And that didn't sit well with everyone in Taiwan's pro-independence camp. Ah, so like he was maybe softening his stance on independence, trying to, I don't know, appeal to a broader group or something. Could be. Some saw it as strategic, you know, to broaden his base. Others felt it was a betrayal of the whole independence movement's core beliefs. It just shows how tough it is for Taiwanese politicians, right? Trying to keep things together at home while China's pressure is always there. Like a really high stakes game of chess. Yeah. And speaking of China, they talk about the CCP's strategy, what they call definition politics. It's kind of fascinating, but also scary. Definition politics. OK, <laughs> got to admit, you lost me there. Yeah. What's that about? And how does it play into China's actions towards Taiwan? So basically, they try to control the narrative by being very careful with language. Like, they blur the lines around words like blockade. It makes it hard to pin them down on what they're actually doing. So no big military show, right? Instead, mm. it's subtle, messing with words to get what they want without setting off alarm bells globally. Exactly. They can pressure Taiwan, but it's all ambiguous. The conversation even mentions this article from a Chinese think tank. They talk about ways to mess with Taiwan's ports without breaking any treaties with the U.S. Uh -huh. Whoa, that's chilling. Like a roadmap to exploit loopholes, get what they want, and the U.S. can't do anything because technically nothing's been violated. Right. And it all feeds into this fait accompli idea. China slowly takes more control step by step without ever crossing a line that would cause a big reaction. So it's definition politics mm -hmm. to create confusion and then fait accompli to change things on the ground. A one-two punch. You got it. Pretty smart, but also pretty worrying when you think about what it means for Taiwan. This is getting a bit Orwellian, to be honest. So if China's playing this game, what can Taiwan and its allies do to push back? The conversation suggests that it's crucial for Taiwan and especially the U.S. to get on the same page. Define those key terms. Make sure everyone understands what means what. Don't let China control the dictionary. So taking back the language, making it clear what aggression looks like, what actions will get a response, mm -hmm. and everyone's crystal clear on that. Exactly. Get rid of that ambiguity China loves so much, they know where the line is, it makes them think twice about crossing it. Sounds like Taiwan needs to be loud and clear about its boundaries, what it won't tolerate, both at home and on the world stage. Absolutely. Don't just react to China. Set the terms. Show that aggression won't be accepted. Wow, this is eye-opening. We've covered so much from the history of Taiwan's status to its own internal politics, now China's strategy. And it all links back to that big question, Taiwan's future. 
but we'll have to wait for part two to get into that. Yes, definitely more to unpack, especially some really interesting historical comparisons they bring up, looking at other countries and how they've handled tough situations. Looking forward to that. It's really interesting, you know, they bring up these examples of other countries in the conversation, almost like they're looking at a mirror, seeing what worked, what didn't, and how that might apply to Taiwan. Yeah, you mentioned the U.S., how it was formed, and also Israel, how it's had to deal with so much conflict. Why those two, though? What makes them relevant to what Taiwan's going through? Well, think about the U.S. It started as these separate colonies, right? Each one with its own identity, its own interests. But they came together, formed a single nation. And Taiwan? They've got their internal divisions, too. Plus, that whole history with mainland China. So they're trying to figure out, what does it really mean to be Taiwanese in this day and age? Yeah, and the speakers in this conversation, they seem to think that Taiwan can learn something from that, from how the U.S. managed to create unity out of all that difference. So not about everyone being the same, but more like finding those things they do agree on, building that identity that can handle pressure from outside. Exactly. And then you have Israel surrounded by enemies, constantly facing threats. But they've not only survived, they've thrived. They've got this incredible resilience, both in terms of their military and just, like, national spirit. Makes sense why the conversation brings them up. Taiwan's facing that same kind of existential pressure from China, even if it's not exactly the same. The point is, both the U.S. and Israel, they show us that even when things seem impossible, nations can find a way. It takes smart strategy, but also that strong belief in what they're fighting for. So it's about using those lessons, mm -hmm. applying them to Taiwan's specific situation. Mm -hmm. Not copy-pasting, but figuring out what works for them. Right. And this all comes back to what we were talking about before. Clear communication. Definitions. That's crucial for stopping China from getting aggressive. Remember that article we discussed? The one about disrupting Taiwan's ports? Ugh, yeah. Gave me chills thinking about it. China's playing the long game, that's for sure. It just shows that Taiwan and its allies, especially the U.S., got to be on the same page about what words mean. Like, what exactly ISA blockade? What counts as military action? If there's confusion, things can get out of control fast. Right, because if each side sees things differently, what one sees as nothing, the other could see as a huge threat. Misunderstandings can lead to, well, really bad things. Absolutely. Imagine China does something they say it's just a normal exercise. But Taiwan sees it as the start of a blockade. And the U.S., well, if they haven't clearly said what'll make them step in, then it's a mess. High stakes poker, but everyone's using different rules. Yeah, and the stakes here are massive, not just for Taiwan, for the whole region, the world even. So clear communication, no mixed messages. Taiwan and its allies got to show a united front let China know that messing with Taiwan will have serious consequences. And it's not just seed about words, right? Taiwan needs to be able to back it up, strengthen their defenses, invest in the right military tech, figuring how to counter what China's building up. And the U.S., other allies, they can't just talk. Arms sales, joint exercises, diplomatic pressure, all that sends a message. We're not going to let China push Taiwan around. And it's a balancing act for sure. Can't provoke China too much, but can't look weak either. That's the tightrope. Strength and diplomacy, both at the same time. Show you're ready to defend Taiwan, but also, hopefully, find a peaceful solution. And that's where the history stuff comes in again. All those arguments about Taiwan's status after the war, how it was never really settled. Right, the Taiwan status undetermined thing creates that loophole China tries to use. They say it proves Taiwan's theirs, but if you look closely, their argument's not that strong legally. Taiwan and its allies need to push back on that in universities, in the media, everywhere. It's a fight over history, almost. Each side trying to control the story to justify what they're doing today. This is a lot to process, but it's really important to understand all these angles. Taiwan's internal politics, China's strategy, the historical arguments, it all comes back to that fundamental question. What's next for Taiwan? Yeah, can they be their own country, free and democratic? Or will China just take over? It's something we'll probably be debating for a long time. But at least now, hopefully, we can have that debate with a deeper understanding. Knowing the history, the politics, the challenges, it all helps. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, especially in a situation like this. It's complicated. It's delicate. And the more we understand, the better chance we have of finding solutions that actually work. Solutions that keep the peace, keep things stable, and let the Taiwanese people decide their own future. So we've really dug deep into Taiwan's past, present, and uh, that uncertain future it's facing, especially with China looming large. I mean, it's a lot to absorb, but 
important stuff if we're going to get the full picture. It's definitely not a topic you can just gloss over. You know, we have to understand those historical arguments, what's going on inside Taiwan politically, and of course, how the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, is strategizing all this. And they're good at it, right? Right. We talked about that whole definition politics thing, how they use words, how they use ambiguity to basically get their way. Subtle, but effective, wouldn't you say? It's like they make it hard for anyone to react because no one's quite sure what's happening. Is it a blockade? Is it just an exercise? If you can't even agree on the words, it creates this dangerous space where China can just keep pushing. And the conversation we're looking at, it makes this point very clear. Taiwan and its allies need to fight back on this. Yeah. Take back control of how things are talked about, define the terms, and make sure everyone understands what will trigger a response. No more guessing games. You hit the nail on the head. Get rid of that ambiguity. That's what China wants. If they know exactly where the line is, well, it makes crossing it a much bigger deal, right? So concretely, what does that look like? What can Taiwan do to counter this definition politics strategy? It starts with Taiwan being very clear, both to its own people and to the world, about what they see as crossing a line. And I mean, being specific, not just saying we'll defend ourselves, but if you do this, that's aggression, period. So like give me examples. Yeah. Instead of broad statements saying if Chinese ships enter our waters without permission, that's a hostile act. Something like that. Exactly. And then, just as important, Taiwan has to work with its allies, especially the U.S. Everyone needs to be reading from the same playbook. What's a threat? What will the response be? Agreement on that is crucial. Because right now, it feels like there's this gap, right? The U.S. might not see something as a big deal, but for Taiwan, it's terrifying. Or the other way around. And guess who benefits from that confusion? It lets China play both sides, get what they want, and no one can mount a united front against them dangerous stuff. So close those gaps, draw those red lines in the sand, and make it crystal clear any attempt to mess with Taiwan security will have consequences. Yes. But also, words are enough. Taiwan needs the muscle to back it up. They have to keep improving their own defenses, buying the right equipment, and coming up with strategies that can actually handle China's growing military. And the U.S., other friendly countries, they can't just offer words of support. Mm. Arms sales, military exercises together, putting diplomatic pressure on China, all of that shows they're serious. They won't let Taiwan be bullied. It's a delicate dance, though, isn't it? You don't want to poke the bear too much, but you can't be a pushover either. Finding that sweet spot, deterrence without starting a war. Showing strength while still hoping for a peaceful solution. Tough, but that's the game. And it brings us right back to those historical arguments, right? The whole Taiwan status undetermined thing. China loves to bring that up. Yeah, the one where, since no one really said who Taiwan belonged to after the war, China says it's theirs by default. But that argument, legally, it's not as solid as they make it seem. Taiwan and its allies, they need to challenge that in academic journals, in the news, everywhere. It's like a battle over the story of Taiwan, its history. Whoever controls that story has a lot of power. And ultimately, it's not just about geopolitics or who owns what island. It's about people, the Taiwanese people, and whether they get to choose their own future. Well, this has been a lot to take in. We've covered Taiwan's past, the politics happening inside the country, China's strategy. And it's clear, we need clarity. We need strong action if you want to prevent things from escalating. Yeah, no easy answers here. But the point is, Taiwan's fate isn't sealed. By looking at all these aspects, by understanding the challenges and what could happen, Maybe we can have a more informed conversation about what's best for Taiwan, how to support peace, stability, and let them decide their own path. And that's what it comes down to, right? We can't just ignore this. It's a conversation that needs to happen, needs our attention. And most of all, we need to stand up for a world where democracy and freedom can actually survive. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And remember, keep asking those questions, keep learning, and stay engaged with what's happening in the world. It matters.